Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hezekiah became king. <laughs> Welcome to Word of His Power Faith Christian Center online and in person. We're so uh, happy to see you this morning. Look at someone with a big smile on your face and say, good morning. And then look at them and say, God is with me. Amen. So let's do our Holy Ghost faith confessions this morning before we get started with the rest of the announcements. So of course, find someone next to you, around you, behind you. Look for someone you specifically don't even like so you can walk in love. This is your chance. Amen. We're giving you a chance. <laughs> Samuel better not be coming to me. <laughs> That's my brother. Amen. So look at them with a big smile on your face and say, something good, something good. is going to happen to you today in Jesus name. Now point to yourself and say, something good is happening to me today in Jesus name. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Amen. So of course today being the first Sunday of the month, it is Communion Sunday at Word of His Power Church. So in person church, you should have received a pre-packaged communion cup and wafer. On the top, you, if you peel it back, you'll get the wafer. And then the second layer, you'll get the juice on the inside. We take communion at the end of service with Pastor Jay leading it right after his sermon and online church of course uh you don't have pre-packaged or maybe you do but uh you can grab any kind of water juice on hand and any kind of bread will work as well so keep that handy and ready uh for that of course being a new month we're starting a new series with dr jay Raman. he is going to be preaching this month on the name of jesus and you it's going to be life-changing it's going to be awesome we're all going to build our faith in the name that at every knee shall bow at that name amen every tongue confess jesus is lord so that's what this month's series is on is on the name of jesus there is kids church this morning they're dismissed right after the offering has been taken up also parents keep in mind for in-person church your kids this morning will be dismissed a little bit early so we can so they'll come into the sanctuary so we can take communion together as a natural family and as a spiritual family amen uh, don't forget, of course, Friday night Bible studies. We encourage you. Those have started, restarted just last Friday uh, on the book of John, the gospel of John. And that is Friday night, 7 p.m. online only uh, via Zoom. So you can go to our church website at wohp.org. Go to online church and sign up for that. And then you'll be receiving those links every week. And of course, corporate prayer is held at church online and in person online on Friday nights at 6.15, Wednesdays at 7, and then in person and online Sundays at 9.45. On that note, I do believe I'm done, so let's continue with the service. Brought me from the darkness into glorious light. Glory to Righteous Father, as we continue to be grateful and thankful for the blood of Jesus Christ, for it is written, the blood of Jesus Christ purges our conscience from all dead works to serve you, the living God. We sang and praise because the blood has power not only to protect us, but the blood empowers us to be overcomers by the word of our testimonies. Father, above all, we thank you for it is written that Jesus himself has washed us with his own blood, not only to redeem and make us white, but he has washed us with his blood 
and made us kings and priests to serve you, the living God. Father God, we thank you as we today gather in the name of Jesus to celebrate, celebrate communion and remember until he comes the precious value of what he did for us on the cross by breaking his own body and shedding his blood. We thank you and I pray, Father, you quicken everyone who is listening today and participating. Give them the value, value and the power behind this communion service that they also will receive not just the power of God, but they will walk in the anointing and the freedom and the wisdom of God, knowing that what the blood has done for them, what the broken body has done for us. We thank you. I ask this in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you. Well, hallelujah once again. We welcome every one of you and we have received a lot of people joining us internationally. So I'm going to just instead of saying just welcome you all, I'll introduce myself also to those people who are new and joining us for the first time. I am Pastor Jay Raman, known as Pastor Jay. Somebody said, why Jay? J for Jesus, so Pastor Jeraman will do. And we thank you for joining us, not just to hear us, but to participate with us, partake of the Word of God, and become doers of the Word, and bring glory to the name of Jesus. So we believe in more than just learning. We believe in practicing and living a good Christian life, not just on Sundays, but every day of our life by applying what we learn and by confessing because confession is the first form of action. Faith without action is dead. We not only teach and talk faith, we live by faith, we breathe by faith, everything we do by faith because faith pleases God. So we can say we are the most pleasing crowd here who follow Jesus Christ. So say this with me. Oh, I give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, and His mercy endures forever. Oh, I give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good to me all the time, and His mercy endures forever. Oh, I give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, and His mercy endures forever. His mercies are new every morning, and His compassions fail not, and great is His faithfulness. So I have my hope in His everlasting mercy, for I am a spirit being. I have a soul. I live in this body. Because I am born again, the Holy Spirit of God is living in me. He is doing everything what Jesus said he would do for me. So I depend on him. I trust in him. For he is always leading me and continue to remind me that I am a child of God. For the word declares as many as are led by the spirit of God they are the sons of God. And I am one of them for God's glory, for God is good to me all the time and His mercy endures forever. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. So this week, we are led to share and talk about the name of Jesus Christ, the importance, why it is so important to learn why we have to learn about the name of Jesus, what that name means to the Father God first, then what the name means to the church, the believers, and what the name means to Satan, and then finally, what the name means to the individual believer. 
So it is all scripturally we are going to study. Our basis of our faith is the Bible. We are not going to discuss theological, you know, theories and theological who said what, what doctor so and so said. We are not interested. We are interested in what God has got to say. We learn, we find out for ourselves, this is what God said, not a preacher. And then we choose to believe what God says and then follow him and that will bring result. So it is important to learn on a regular basis about the name of Jesus Christ. Because first and foremost, without that name of Jesus Christ, Christianity doesn't exist. You go and tell any part of the world, you don't have to even mention the name of Jesus. Because I have done it so from experience I am telling. You go and tell I am a Christian. How you don't know, they, it may be a remote place, but they will say, oh, that Jesus, and then they will put their hand automatically. They may not be even saved. Their hand will go and show that they will make the sign of the cross. See, that is the Holy Ghost. So without, Christian, without Jesus' name, without Jesus Christ, there is no Christianity. And Christianity is not a religion. Religious people have made Christianity to be a weak religion, but you and I are believers. You and I are born again believers, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, anointed with Holy Ghost and power, following the Lord Jesus Christ with His Word and His Spirit. So, we are today going to start, first find out, the important basic thing about how did Jesus get that name? Because see, normally we name, we name one another, our parents name us, and there are so many factors in naming somebody culturally and geographically. But that is not the way Jesus' name was named. Your name and my name, before we got born again, is given to us by our parents or our elders to identify you. But the Hebrew word, the word for name, is Shem. One of the Hebrew word for name is Shem. Meaning, a name which reveals the honor, the character, and I don't want to miss it. I read it from the Hebrew translation. To reveal honor, authority, and character behind that name. So that is the Hebrew word for Shem. So you see, even though our names are named by our elders for how they did and all, we cannot question because we were babies. But in the Bible, when you read any names, it has a purpose. Right from God to the angels to even the Son of God, the name reveals basically three things. The honor behind that name, the authority behind that name and the character behind that name. So, Bible names are not only given for identity purpose, but it reveals more than honor, authority and character. But Jesus' name is greater than, it reveals more than honor, authority and character. God has invested everything. Everything means everything. Into that name of Jesus. And you and I, as Christians, we must develop on a daily basis through meditation and confession and start valuing without feeling, without reasoning, 
start valuing the name of Jesus Christ. You say, why? You are going to learn it. I learned it because for us, you know, I have got a Hindu name. I have by my name today, you can read in the news, they have built a temple for me in India. But that means still my Hindu name is a Sanskrit name. If you translate that, I'm happy to carry on as a Christian the same name because my name translated Jayaraman means one who is always victorious and I say thanks be to God who gives me the victory through my Lord Jesus Christ. So I continue to have my name from Jayaraman to Jayaraman and did not change it to Chuck for you to remember me. <laughs> I am Jayaraman. So before we go into that, how Jesus got his name, there are six names in the Bible, out of which Jesus is one of them, but there are five names of so many thousands of names in the Bible, there are five names of people who God selected and named them. That is interesting. God, that means why I want to bring that now in the beginning is, if God selects the name, that means he's interested in human being. He's not some God sitting there like a judge waiting for you to make mistake and swat you with a scepter and kill you. Or he's looking to find fault with you and instantly punish you and throw you on the side. No, this God is interested in you and me right from Adam to Jesus Christ to you and me because we believe in Jesus Christ. So he personally has selected five people's name. I thought some of you will be interested because if you are a believer and a Bible follower, these are all from the Bible. The first name in the Bible where God named them before their birth. See, you and I are named after our birth. But these six people, including Jesus, their name, they were named before their birth. Number one, Ishmael. The first father is Abraham, mother is Hagar. And the reference I'll give you, you can read it for yourself. Genesis 16, 11 says, God sending an angel and naming Ishmael is the first name. Second, Isaac, Genesis 17, 19. Isaac was named before he was born. Then Josiah, King Josiah, 1 Kings 13, verse number 2. Then King Solomon, King Solomon, the son of David, was also named before his birth under the instruction of God. In 1 Chronicles 22 and verse 9, you can read, it's, it talks about that. And Jesus Christ, he was named before he was born. In Mary was instructed to name him in Matthew 1, 21 and Luke 1, 31. And finally, John the Baptist, he was named before his birth. When his father was worshipping inside the temple, he was told by the angel to name his son John. So these six names, these people were named before their birth by the guidance and instruction of God. And among the six, we are more interested in Jesus Christ, who is our Lord. And now, while studying, like I said, we are not just going to fill us our head with knowledge. This name of Jesus means something in heaven before the Father God. This name means something not only before the Father in heaven, it means something to the church. As a church goer, it is very important because without properly knowing to use the name of Jesus, you will be just one more Christian, helpless, weak, people will ridicule. Those days are changing, you better get ready. Like they say, when you are in the plane, all aboard, please 
fasten your tight uh, fasten your seat belt because we are taking off in the spirit for some great and mighty things of god in your life now then that name means something to satan and that day that sunday is going to be the most funniest humorous day because when you take the name of jesus satan trembles even though people are afraid of satan fear no when we study what it means to satan that will make you joyful and you will hilariously laugh what it means to satan then finally what it means to be a believer see a lot of people say i am christian i am i am believer no if you are a believer the first thing more than believing anything see religious christians will tell you oh we believe in the promises of god we believe in the covenant keeping god we believe in the covenant of god no with the mouth of jesus christ himself there is one instruction for every believer that is first to believe in the name of jesus christ one sample of scripture i'll give you he said in john 14 let not your heart be troubled believe in god believe also in me see it is not a request it is a commandment and that command alone if somebody takes and applies on a daily basis will be the most successful christian but there are so many where the name of jesus can be used and you are going to see progress i am not standing here as a sunday pastor to give you one more sermon this today is the beginning because year 2024 has already been prophesied to be a great year for every believer and this is the beginning in the name of jesus you better make yourself serious you better make yourself sincere you better make the choice and say with this lesson i'm going to make it part of my life and that, that is all requires rest god will do so now how did jesus get the name We saw one in Matthew one twenty one said the angel Gabriel told Mary you will call him you will, you are going to conceive and you will call him his name Jesus, but that is the only beginning. But Jesus' name why it is valuable why it is powerful what is that so great about the name of Jesus? Then we have to scripturally find out how did he get his name apart from angel telling. because we you heard god has invested everything into that name it has made the most powerful name so much so that devil is perverting you see all the comedians and all these people they ridicule and for it is always accompanied with some foul language but a believer for you and me it should not be accompanied with any foul language because it is not only a holy name it is a powerful name it is represents something greater than your mind can ever comprehend so go with me to the book of hebrews we'll read three portions of scripture hebrews first chapter follow with me god who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets has in these last days spoken unto us by his son whom he has appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the worlds who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high being made so much better than the angels as he has as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they i will read verse number 4 once again being made so much better than the angels as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they so first jesus obtained his name by inheritance what is the meaning details of it will study more but remember first he obtained the name by inheritance and secondly if you read the first three verses it 
tells us that now, through that name, he represents the very image and the essence of God. So he obtained his name by inheritance, number one. Then go with me to the book of Philippians. Book of Philippians, the second chapter. We'll read verse number 9, 10, and 11. Wherefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and the things under the earth. See, these things in heaven is not talking about just some material things. Original translation says that beings in heaven. Wherefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, that the beings in heaven, the beings in earth, and beings under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. So, Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. But the important verse says that God gave him a name above every other name. Anything which has a name, being, being means see, sickness and all, they are all, they name them all right, but sickness has got some kind of living, cre uh, wire, uh, living germs or things, which is what contributes to sickness. But just because man with his intelligence named diseases with name, but when you develop faith and power in the name of Jesus and you take that and if that kind of any disease comes near you, you can command it, that will bow to the name of Jesus and leave you. That's what he means, being. And now thirdly, go with me to the book of Ephesians. Book of Ephesians says here, first chapter, We'll start reading from verse number 17 onwards. That, uh, more than me, the Bible is more excited. It keeps jumping, so that's good. So I call my anointed iPhone. It wants to show that it is a Pentecostal iPhone, so it just, just jumped. And it jumped to Galatians. Come back to Ephesians. <laughs> that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints is? What is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and has put all things under his feet gave him to be head over all things to the church so here you find third way he obtained his name is by conquest first he received his name through inheritance book of hebrews says second when you read in the book of Philippians that God has given him a name, 
That is not just like giving some name, it is the word used there, the original translation says bestow, means it is a name with honor, like title with as power. So that name was bestowed to him. So first he got it by inheritance, second it was bestowed to him so that every name which has a name has to bow in heaven, on earth, under the earth, it has to bow to that name because that is such an honorable name. God bestowed it upon him. Thirdly, he obtained that name through conquest. He conquered. What did he conquer? He conquered over sin, Satan, disease, poverty, death, hell, and the grave. He conquered it as a conqueror. That's why it is, I read so many verses from 17 to 21 because it described the conquest of Jesus Christ over all these things. Sin, sickness, disease, lack and poverty, death, hell and grave. Because of this conquest and because he has that name, that is why you and I are saved by that name. Because that has power. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, he says. And the way you got saved is by declaring that Jesus Christ is your Lord and believing that God raised him from the dead. See, it all starts with his name. So now we know he acquired that name by inheritance, by God's bestowing it upon him and through conquest. So if that is the case, why it is so important? Because that name now means to a believer, you started your journey as a Christian in the name of Jesus Christ by declaring him to be your Lord. Now you must know how to use that name. Because can that name be used to get things what we want? Can that name be used in prayer? Can that name be used against our enemies? Can that name be used against Satan? Can that name be used against sickness and disease? Or everything which Jesus conquered through conquest by defeating? Can that name be used against death? Yes, the Bible teaches us so. That means we have to learn and start learning to use that. Too long we have depended on ourselves or some anointed minister to do the job. But no, it is the name of Jesus which gets the job done. And you and I need to say, yes, I want this and I'm going to learn. And all it takes is a begin with a choice, a decision and your faith. God will do the rest. So now let us start today because of time. How the name is used in prayer? How can we use that name in prayer? Because Jesus said in John the 16th chapter, John 16, quickly let us go and read. John 16, verse 24, Jesus said this. Because Jesus said about prayer in other places too. For example, in Matthew 7, he said, Ask and you shall receive. And Mark, he said, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them. He talked about prayer. But here, he talks something greater. And he gives a believer the secret of answered prayer. So here, in John 16, 24, he says, Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask, you shall receive, that your joy may be full. So now... Before that, 23rd verse he said, And in that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. This is Jesus talking. It is, see, people have taken this and when they have not followed what the Bible says. They have come up with their own reasoning and their own religious theology for unanswered prayer. 
He says, if you ask anything in my name, the Father will give it to you. He didn't say when the Father is in good mood. He didn't say if it is His will. He didn't say, you know, if you are perfectly, spiritually, perfectly satisfying to the Father. He didn't say any of that. He didn't say maybe you have secret sin when Father finds out. He, will. he says if you ask anything in my name, He will give it to you. You believe that? Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because this is Jesus talking. And then he says, hitherto means he's telling, see, this when he's talking, this is on the night when he was about to be betrayed and taken to the cross. That night after communion service, he's telling the disciples. Chapter 13, 14, 15, and 16, and 17. This is the longest night Jesus spoke and there are so many people used to say, oh, you know, the Sermon on the Mount is a long sermon. No, this is part of the longest sermon you can ever find in the Bible. Chapter 13, 14, 15, 16 and 17. And that night he's telling them he's about to be crucified. Hitherto means until now you heard that God will answer prayer. Until now you heard that when you approach the Father. And now he's telling this is how you, your prayers are going to be answered. If you ask anything, the Father in my name, He will give it to you. And you have not up till now asked anything in my name. You ask the Father will do it so that your joy may be full. See, this is an assurance. You have got to meditate and keep on saying that. Wait a minute. Because see, I don't know about you. This is He's talking about the individual believer's prayer. Religion, you know, the people take these verses out of context and apply here. Oh, I prayed, I prayed for so and so's salvation and they have not been yet saved. I prayed some, something happened. No, this is talking about you. Jesus said, right? Either to you have not asked anything in my name. So this is because you are a believer, you are a child of God, first you get your prayers answered. It means for you, you have to first get, only when you get, you can tell others that what you have, they too also can get. But if you don't have, you cannot give it to others. So first get your prayers answered. See, Christians are trying to be lazy fellows, lazy Christian fellows, and they don't want to do any effort. They think God is running some iPhone, press two buttons and God will answer. It doesn't. The answer is very easy. God, if you want me to talk to you in computer language, yes, Jesus Christ said, I am the access card and the code, the code for that access card is faith. So when you use that access card, then only it will work. You cannot use my access access card in your bank account. I cannot use your access card in my bank account, but there is an access card for the heaven's bank account. You use that. That access card is the name of Jesus Christ. The password for that is faith. I didn't make this up. The Bible says in Romans the fifth chapter, verse 1 and 2, it says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ and through that name, we have now access to the grace of God because of what Jesus Christ has done. That means Jesus Christ gives you access. You want your prayer to be answered? This is the way you get it answered. I don't know about you. Every time, any time when I pray, God always answers because you use this truth, you develop it and it is as a pastor of your this church, I want everybody to have the same testimony. Yes, pastor, I prayed, God answered me. That is how your personal relationship is built up. That is how you are a being born again, blood washed believer. There is one thing to say, the blood of Jesus Christ has power. There is another thing to say, believe that you are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ and show that power to the people. Yes, when I pray, God answers. I am telling you, not just for sermon, God is, yeah, oh, you know, two days ago, when I am praying, I got a text message. Somebody, one of my friend pastor, he was about to get, you know, stroke and the family texted me and said, Pastor Jay, pray, pray. You know, he's about, his hand is all pulling and he's, he's, he's about to get a stroke, I, we believe. We don't know. My, my husband is attending to him. Please pray, remember us. You know, I didn't pray a long prayer. Simply I said in the name of Jesus. 
Mercy, Lord. And next, I know, you know, this happened on Friday evening, Saturday morning, I get a text. You know, he woke up completely all right. There was no stroke. There was nothing. The name of Jesus Christ works. The name of Jesus Christ, God will answer. And I want you to develop that because there is a time coming. You will not be able to handle the blessing which is going to overtake you. You will not be able to handle the blessings of God, but you need the access code. You need the name. You name the name about every other name. That that name has power, that name has authority, that name has character, that name, everything what God has got is in that name and that name, Jesus said, I give it to you. Amen. See, you have to use not only in prayer. Matthew 28, most of us know what Jesus said. 18th verse, he said, now all authority is given to me and you go now I'm paraphrasing for want of time. You go now, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then he said, and I will be with you even till the end of time. How is he going to be with us till the end of time? He said, all power and authority is given to him. Yes, when he rose again, God gave him all the power and authority. Immediately, he took that power and authority, which is given to him. He put that in that name and read, wrote it as a power of attorney for you and me to use that name. So when you ask the Father in the name of Jesus, using the power of attorney given to you in the name of Jesus, Prayer is no longer a prayer of crying and begging. Prayer become a legal proposition. He said, if you ask anything in my name, I will endorse that prayer. The moment I endorse, the Father will do it for you. Father will give it to you because of the name. And he said, I am with you till end of time. How is he with us till end of time? How do you know? To understand that, you go to Matthew, the 18th chapter, verse 18 and 19, he said like this. If two of you on earth, are you all still on earth? Yes. yes. If two of you on earth ask touching anything, agree and ask anything, it will be done for you. Then he said, when two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in their midst. See, this verse, ministers, including myself, has taken it out of context many times, even though it is partially true. Yeah, when we gather in the name of Jesus Christ, he is present, because he said, if two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in their midst. It is only partially true. But what he meant is, when two or three are in agreement about anything and ask in my name, at that time I am with them. So his name represents the person of Jesus Christ. The name represents the power of God in, through that name. So when we start agreeing about things, that this city will be saved, that Canada will be a Christian country when we all agree together and ask in Jesus' name, it will be done. So that is why you need to develop the power and faith in the name of Jesus because there I miss means he's presenting himself, is confirming by faith you have to believe Jesus is with us. And I don't know about you, I have used that prayer with my wife for anything and everything. We two agree, especially husband and wife, start using that scripture and you will not have marriage problem. You will not, see you cannot have all the time argument with your wife and say, come on, please come and agree with me, pray. It will not work. But the, you start using it, any other disagreement between husband and wife will go away because God 
God's word becomes important, your desire to get things done get important, then the argument will stop in the family, the fight will stop with the husband and wife, and you as husband and wife can use it because I do it all the time with this, this young woman. I will say, come on, Sarah, I have used it for anything and everything. One testimony comes to my, face, uh, my, my heart. One day we were having breakfast, and through the patio door we saw a baby bird, small one, it has fallen from somewhere in the, in the wind, fallen in, in our backyard. Brand new baby bird, you know, all pink color, the skin is not grown properly. It's small bird, like that is making little faint noise. So we both saw, my wife said, see the baby is there. Oh, the, where is the mother? From where it came, we are discussing. While we are about to discuss that, my wife said, Jay, forget it. Let us agree that the mother will come and take care of the baby. Is it important to our life? Is it important at all? But to God it's important because he said, not even a sparrow dies without his knowledge. He said that. So it is important to God. The Spirit of God knows that. So she said, agree with me. So I stopped eating the, the bread I was eating, reached across the table, held hand as a father. In the name of Jesus, me and Sarah agree that the parents of that bird will come and rescue that bird. And we said that and turned around. And when we are making a second time before I bet the bread, the father and the mother came, took care of the bird, and the bird was fully taken care, and that is how you know the prayer of agreement works. Yeah. It may not be important, but you, see, I don't know about you, every time when the word works, I get excited, because if God can take care of your prayer for a small bird, think about your own family, think about your needs, think about your family needs, your friends' needs, How, what a powerful Christian you and I will be, because we have something called the power in the name of Jesus, we have something called faith in the name of Jesus Christ, we have got something called the word of the living God, and God says, learn and use this prayer, use it in your prayer, because the Father wants to give it to you. Father wants to do it for you so that your joy may be full. Yeah. Don't reason. If the prayer is not answered somewhere, you stop it. Again, we go back to the word and keep reading. God, you said it. I am believing. I am going. I will see that my mind doesn't come in the way. Before the devil comes, it is your mind which comes in the way. Put your mind away and start staying with the word. Start saying with the word. Start staying with the word. Start saying with the word. God, he said, Jesus said, my father will do it for you. My father will give it to you so that your joy may be full. See, these are the things you need to learn. Meditate. And your life will not be the same. Your dependence on government, security, in savings, that fellow, that fellow. No need. You have the living God who, the Bible says, he who did not give, spare his only begotten son, how, how can he not with him also freely give you all things. All means all. A-L-L -L is all. All means all. See, people, instead of developing these things, they are busy always pressure. They are looking at their problem. They are looking at their sickness. They are looking at the doctor's report. They are looking at the bank account. They are looking at the government. They are looking at the budget of the government. No, you look unto Jesus. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, you run the race, for he is the author and finisher of our faith. So if you start looking and start not looking at your feeling, not looking at your reasoning, not looking at your emotion, not looking at the what the doctor says, not looking at the bank balance says, what the symptom says, you look to Jesus. Jesus said, if you ask the Father in his name, he will do it for you. If you ask in the Father in his name, he will give it to you. I don't know about it. There's no doubt about it. There is no reason about it. There is no confusion about it. This is simple English. See, this name, the name of Jesus represents, is the presence of Jesus. And the name of Jesus is 
the power of the Almighty God. I don't know about you, I can tell you thousands of testimonies. Personal as well as, I am only for title, I am a pastor. I am standing in the office of the pastor. My title is not pastor. I am just doing the work of a pastor when I pastor with people. So, you have to learn, constantly meditate, meditate on this word. Tell, tell your, take the name with reverence in your name. Value, put value, not with emotion, but value. Oh, if God says this value, the name is above every other name. This name is important to me. And I'll tell you, I have a weakness. Even though the name has power, I have a weakness. You come and try to even tell me a joke or ridicule about Jesus. You have to pray that I don't go violent. <laughs> and I have done it with one pastor in the mall one day when we were walking. That man told me while talking, he's some theological Methodist, uh, no, some United Church pastor. And he told me, you know, Brother Jay, Jesus, you know, it's all the various, uh, what he said, um, debating, discussion, and I have passed all those exams in the, in the seminary, I mean seminary, and you know, it is supposedly Jesus rose again. Moment he finished that, I forgot I'm in a mall, I forgot my wife is with me, I forgot others are watching, I raised my voice and yelled at him, I told him, I don't want to even talk to you. You, you, I really pity your congregation, I told him. Then my wife reminded that he's already retired, I said, praise God. <laughs> Finally, with this testimony, we'll close and study next week. Don't miss next week. See, the name... Not only you can use it in prayer, when you are in serious trouble, when you are in any kind of serious trouble, it doesn't matter what kind, it may be life-threatening, it may be some great crisis, it may be the atomic bomb is about to fall on your head, doesn't matter. This is a real experience I'm teaching you, I'm sharing with you, and since three o'clock, I've been meditating, the Lord reminded me to share this with you. When we first arrived in Canada, I'm still learning from right hand drive to left hand drive. You know, here everything is different. While I'm learning, I'm very carefully driving. Going to work, coming back, and my friends, my friends said, Mr. J, be careful in Canada. Winter is about to arrive. You should be very careful about black ice. Anybody heard me pronunciation correct? Black ice? You understand black ice? They told me, be careful about black ice, okay? That is very dangerous. I said, no, okay. That's all they said. They, nobody gave me any YouTube video or explanation or anything. I remembered there is black ice. I have to be careful. And here comes the first year, we are driving on Christmas Eve, come to this church here in London Gospel Temple. They used to have a program called the Christmas Singing Christmas Tree. Anybody has seen Singing Christmas Tree? You will find people hidden behind the Christmas tree and like a big tree and they will all sing a choir. For us, this is new. I'm new in Canada. We are driving. So I was driving in Wonderland Road. You know Sarinya Road? From Sarinya Road, the road little goes down. And then it comes to Oxford Street. And of course, in those years, now the traffic is too much. In those years, traffic was there when I came. So at Sarinya Road, I coming slowly. I find there is only one lane. Everybody is on the left lane slowly going. The right lane is completely empty. <laughs> Nobody there. And I told my wife, what is happening to these Canadians? <laughs> the wide the road is wide open and they don't even drive there. We will reach in time, Sarah, come on, praise the Lord. And I just 
left the lane and came to the right lane, I immediately got a revelation of what is black eyes is. <laughs> My car went zoom. It went skating from Sarinya Road. It is skating, going. There are cars. This side, there is the road and all those things. I didn't have time to pray. I didn't have time to remember Psalm 91. Nothing. All we did, ask my daughter, we, but three of us, Jesus! 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 Jesus skating all, but he came to a halt at Oxford Street. Not, nothing was hit, no damage, no nothing. From that day, I've been still saying, when I'm 95 years old, I really want to go skating with my wife because I have full experience of skating. But you see, the name of Jesus protected us. And God is our witness. You have got to learn to use it, not think about it. Because that day after the service, when we were going in the same place, three cars were heavily damaged. Three couples, their cars were damaged. They were taken to hospital and everything. But Jairam and family was spared because of the name of Jesus Christ. Who knows more about black eyes than me do. So we are going to celebrate learning about this name. I would encourage every one of you. Hear this message over and over again. That's how I develop faith. I used to hear Brother Higgins message on the name of Jesus. Constantly I will hear. I'll never say I know it. Even before I started this lesson, I've been whole week studying, whole week studying, praying. I never said, Lord, I know. Because it is not by knowing you just your faith develop. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So decide for yourself. With this one name, you can conquer. You can get attention in heaven. You can have great life on earth. And you can defeat Satan and his hell on a constant basis. In Jesus' name I declare that. Thank you, Lord. Hey guys, I'm Justin and I'm on the media team here at What If It's Power Church. Thank you for joining us today. And I would like to remind you to check out our website at wohp.org and follow us and like us on social media. We are What If It's Power Church, the place where lives are changed and people are blessed. mention of you. Sinners chains breaking free, miracles are happening, waters part, I see 